So I'm Epi Kapsalis, I'm from the Smithsonian. I'm Kelly Doyle, I'm also from the Smithsonian. <laughs> so we are a uh, lean and mean team of two on a project called the American Women's History Initiative. Now, the way things happen in the US is we get a call from Congress to investigate opening another museum. And in this case, we decided to do a digital first approach and Wikipedia is a key partner of how we're going to execute that. So I just want to take you a little bit um, from the GLAM perspective of what we're trying to do with uh, surfacing more women's stories across the organization. We have 19 interdisciplinary museums and we have uh, research centers in, in multiple disciplines and libraries and archives and a zoo. We like to leave the zoo for the end because of the Z. Um, so our data landscape is very complex. Um, we have been fortunate enough to aggregate it into a common middle layer to be able to publish it online, but it's not pretty. And it also does not do a good job with representing populations that are important in the US. So one of our biggest tasks is to um, establish that process for increasing representation throughout the collections of the Smithsonian. So this is a finding aid, and this is in the archives of the Smithsonian, and this is a typical uh, finding aid. The Smithsonian Archives keeps the history of the Smithsonian since 1846, which is rather old for us. Um, and we take in papers from staff who've worked uh, across the world. And one of these papers is for a woman named Roxy Kali Laybourne. And when I was at the archives, this was pretty much all that we had online of Roxy Kali Laybourne. Now through um, staff oral history, I learned this woman was pretty amazing and she was also responsible for improving the, the safety of a multi-billion dollar industry of air flight, commercial air flight. So she was in charge of the Natural History Museum's Feather Lab and this is a collection of multiple thousands of uh, bird specimen. And when any plane in the US was involved in a bird strike, she was sent the remains of the bird from the accident and was able to compare that against the specimen throughout the collection and fed that in information to the Federal Air Administration and told them about the, the flight patterns and migration patterns of the birds that were involved in the strike. Hence, uh, less airstrikes, less accidents, less human fatalities. Um, she was virtually unknown when we started with our first Wikipedian in residence at the archives. And she was in one of our, our first edit-a-thons. We also did an outreach campaign, um, a quick and dirty way to have a secondary source about her. So this was basically a social media Women in Science Wednesday campaign that had a statement of notability. Um, this was a starting point for the Wikipedian who was coming into our events to be able to determine what the notability was for this person because that was not in the finding aid about her. So after a series of about four edit-a-thons on this topic, we had close to 100 new articles about women in science. And, um, you know, we all, I, I talked to leadership about being able to Google her name and you see her front and center and there's a summary of of her accomplishments, and she did start a field of science called forensic ornithology. So this has grown, this is, article has had multiple hundred edits, it's richer than any biography we have on our own website. Um, so at this moment that we're kicking off the American Women's History Initiative, what can we do to really uh, catalyze this notion of planting a seed record of maybe creating a small secondary source, but then really feeding that to multiple communities to um, grow this knowledge base around the world about women. So I'll just point out um, some other crowdsourcing efforts and how women have surfaced from below, um, below the water. Uh, we have a transcription center where we have about 12,000 
volunteers who are tra transcribing our primary source documents. And we have a uh, an active Twitter um, following and dialogue with the volunteers there. And one woman, Siobhan Leishman, who's across the world in New Zealand, unearthed a, uh, a woman in the collection. Now, the context of this is that in the US, federal law prohibited both women and men from holding a job in the federal government at the same time. So you know what happens. Often the male holds the job and the woman was working on a volunteer status. So her name is not attached to the work that she often did in partnership with a husband or a brother. So this is the, the card this woman was transcribing and it was for a specimen. And this um, transcription became an immediate record in the natural histories collection once it was transcribed. And the caption below is Mr. and Mrs. J. N. Rose, collectors. Who is Mrs. J. N. Rose? Right? That's a hard thing to find. But Siobhan tracked this woman down. She shared information with other repositories where this woman has collections, and she also created a Wikipedia page about, um, oh boy, and now I'm forgetting her first name, which is so awful, but uh, uh, okay, it'll come to me. Um, so we all hear this statistic about 17.91% of Wikipedia biographies are about women. I'm, um, I, we've done a baseline assessment of the Smithsonian's collections in relation to gender representation, and we are doing worse than that in terms of things that are explicitly tagged female uh, gender. Um, so we have a lot of work to do uh, in order to help this number, and that's going to start internally. And uh, I'm, I'm guided by one of our curators who collected a lot of uh, material around the feminist movement in the US, and she was very committed to, to sharing and growing the stories about women. And she said, when you're invisible, people assume you've done nothing. So I want these people in the archives to be visible. So our, our goal is really big. It's to transform Americans uh, American history to be more inclusive of, of women and those who identify as women and girls as well. Um, we're specifically seeking out more diverse <laughs> stories in the collection that may not be there, so we'll be collecting related to those populations in the U.S. The scope of the initiative um, from fundraising and from a, um, a appropriation from Congress is uh, that we're bringing on nine four-year curators in multiple disciplines who will be creating new resources about women's history. Um, they're everything from a, a person who's investigating Native American women artists to someone who's looking at the history of our own uh, female scientists. We are, uh, we just, had our first round of paid internships, um, we realized that we need to also bring in more diverse uh, staff members into our organization. So this is something that we'll be doing every year and the response was amazing. We got hundreds of applications, so we're gonna um, fundraise to grow that, that pool that we can host. We have pool funds across the organization uh, attached to the goals for the initiative, which are at the top. And um, major exhibits launching for the 100th anniversary of um, uh, Caucasian women's suffrage, we like to say, because we have lots of barriers for diverse women in the U.S. ongoing, um, which this exhibit looks at. And um, we have uh, a digital first strategy. So this was launched under our goal of reaching 1 billion people a year, which you know is clearly the call to be more um, partnering with, with all of you. And Kelly Doyle is our Wikipedian in residence for gender, and she is looking at many paths for us to not only diversify our community base, but to create new partnerships and also to harness all the scholarship that's going on across the organization. So the, the digital strategy is um, we're, we're centering audience, so we're doing some co-creation with some of our key target audiences of um, women and girls of color, college students and middle school students because of the time of life they're at and they're considering gender and, and how they, they fit in the spectrum. Uh, we are bringing on a content coordinator to, to 
collate all of this so we have good resources. We're, um, we're looking at machine learning and uh, crowdsourcing and um, piloting, piloting a digital curatorship to increase our data at scale. So we've been doing it one by one and relying on very kind of uh, bespoke interactions with the public, but now we really want to take that to a new level. So looking at improving the Smithsonian records and scale, I'll just dive a little into each of these areas. Uh, so we, we have a digital curator who, her job is expressly writing digital resources. Um, we, you know, our normal curators are writing publications, producing exhibits, but this person is focusing specifically on the digital medium and how we can create better resources. Uh, and we are looking at, uh, at sharing those on various open knowledge platforms. We have, uh, we're doing some crowdsourcing internally. So she, uh, actually one of our senior botanists put out the call to everyone across the organization from astrophysics to zoology to write down who are the female first and seconds in the organization. And that list is becoming um, the list that this curator is working on and building out. And this is you know, structured data. It's an Excel spreadsheet. We're gonna put an open refine layer on top of this. Um, now that we've had a good hackathon and connected with wonderful people and gotten good ideas. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna become exported to Wikidata. We have about 150 names, we're looking to increase that. And once we've tested that method, we're gonna look at uh, different disciplines for doing this across the organization. Um, and one more thing to mention, um, Alex Stinson was showing me a tool yesterday where uh, it's built on? Um, it's creating Wikidata pages automatically. It's called... Uh, it begins yeah. with a C. E there's a, there, okay. It's escaping us right now. Yes, there's a tool. So we're gonna, we're gonna create basically a really simple form. And we have affiliates in every state in the US. So campaign, contribute five women in your collections. Fill out this form, it just goes straight to Wikidata. So we'll do very calls around um, different Great. topics. Cradle, what is it? Cradle. 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 Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we were so close. <laughs> if you have complaints, uh, send them to me. I wrote to them. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Usually programmers aren't so uh, upfront, but I appreciate it. Um, so data science, we have a data science fellow who's helping to establish what our baseline is to, to build off and improve. And they'll also be creating um, tools for curators who are, are not focused on digital records, but we hope to capture their processes as well. And then improving things um, at scale and then uh, creating semantic data that we can um, put in as many places as they will take. Uh, and finally, to the crowdsourcing portion. Um, we are um, looking at all the platforms I mentioned, but we're also trying to figure out how you tag women in collections. This is not what we typically do. We avoid tagging gender to create uh, unexpected bias in, in our records, right? So we don't want to call out a woman scientist. We want to call out scientists and have lots of women in there. However, when you're moving towards a National Women's History Museum, we need to know what we have, and people are studying that these days. So um, I think we need to be transparent about what our representation looks like. So um, one of the things we're doing, we're, we're borrowing from the San Francisco Museum of Art, and they've um, had these workshops where they print out collection records and they have different communities mark up um, suggested terms to make them more discoverable and related to what they know as human beings. So this is a, um, a garment. It, it looks like, a, uh, this is an American reference, a Jerry Seinfeld puppy shirt, but actually <laughs> it's, um, it's uh, shirt waist that were produced in sweatshops in the US. Uh, and this uh, 
sweatshop caught on fire. It had mostly young immigrant women working in the sweatshop. And so there's this whole story behind this object that is, is not that um, apparent in what's written already. So we've already started workshopping these with um, middle school students and high school students and, and our own staff to, to improve them. And, uh, and the wiki work, which is vast. And really, today is a call to start to build partnerships with all of you. Um, we're focused on American women because of the law that told us to start doing this. But I really see this as an opportunity to come together and think about how we can do better representation of, of women in diverse communities all around the world. So let's test out some processes that others can use. Here's Kelly Joy. So I'm going to talk a little bit um, about what we're doing specifically in terms of wiki. Um, and so one of those things is hosting regular edit-a-thons. And this image is coming from an edit-a-thon we did at the National Portrait Gallery back in April. Um, and one of the things we did there was try to work with an exhibit that was opening around that time. And thinking through not only an edit-a-thon, but thinking through what are work lists that we can have contributed from the curators who are already working on this exhibit while it's fresh in their minds. What are some of the images from the exhibit that we can put onto Commons? Um, and how can we link that all in data around tripping on Wikidata? Um, and getting our curators at each museum involved as exhibits are opening. Um, so that's one of the things we did. Um, another thing that we're trying to do is identifying ways for both the Wikimedia community to be involved in our project, um, but also our Smithsonian volunteers, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and another thing that Effie touched on a little bit, and I'll get into a little bit more detail on, is some micro crowdsourcing um, tactics. So we're thinking about four different micro crowdsourcing options that we're going to test out and see how they do not only internally, but maybe how they can be replicated within the Wikimedia community, kind of like how One Live, One Ref has taken off. Um, and so those four are a micro crowdsourcing um, option around depict statements, um, developing work lists, um, info boxes, automatically populating info boxes, and data round tripping. And so Effie also mentioned our Smithsonian affiliates throughout the United States. Um, and one that I'm really excited about is this work list generation through the affiliate system um, and getting them to say, who are five notable women in your context that don't get enough cred, that aren't on Wikipedia, and how can we change that? Um, and so that's one that I'm really excited about. But I think that all of these micro crowdsourcing tests are something that will be really interesting, not just for the Smithsonian, but for our Wiki commu Wikimedia community too, um, to know how they did, have some documentation around, and see what works in the GLAM context. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, another thing that I didn't mention was for our image release with the Votes for Women exhibit at the National Portrait Gallery, we, re we uploaded about 230 images. Um, and we did that in partnership also with the Who's Knowledge Visible Wiki Women Challenge that was in March and April of this year. And um, I wanted to show an example of one of the images that we were able to upload. It's this image right here on the right. Um, this was the image that was Sojourner Truth's lead image on her English Wikipedia page. Um, this image is in the exhibit, Votes for Women exhibit. And we uploaded the highest res version that we could and we replace this lead image on Wikipedia. And this is how it looks now. So Sojourner Truth's page is viewed about 800 times on average a day on English Wikipedia. And so far, this image has been viewed around 180,000 times. So us changing this image is really remarkable. And it was something that was really simple to do, pulling this image from an exhibit that curators were already working on and replacing it. And so being able to replicate that across the Smithsonian museums is something that could have really great and high impact. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, a, a new growing concept of the Smithsonian of edit-a-thons and maybe rolling them out in bigger ways institutionally. So the next edit-a-thon we're doing, which I also want to plug because it's going to be live streamed, um, is an Ada Lovelace Day edit-a-thon, which a lot of you know happen internationally. 
Um, this is not new for the movement. Um, but so for this event, it's going to happen at the National Air and Space Museum in DC. And we're going to partner with NASA and Boeing. Um, NASA um, is thinking about live streaming it on their social media platforms as well. Smithsonian is going to live stream. We're going to do a podcast. We're going to have a video um, interviewing folks at the Edit-a-thon and also doing screencasts of um, real-time editing so folks watching can learn in real time. We're also going to have an illustrator at the event to illustrate um, images of women that are copyright protected or restricted to be able to have lead images for their articles on their Wikipedia, on Wikipedia. Um, backstage passes before the event with our expert curators around the um, museum before it opens to the public, which we're really excited about. And we're crowdsourcing work lists, um, not only at Air and Space Museum, but at the Smithsonian Observatory and throughout the Smithsonian from science, women and science experts. So I think that this rollout could be a really great model for us moving forward and having lots of coordinated and connected ways for people to engage not only at the Smithsonian, but remotely as well. And I just want to quickly mention that's uh, in partnership with Wiki Women in Red yes. and yes. also Wikimedia DC, who has yes. been on hand for every single edit-a-thon helping the newbies. Yes, across thank the you, Wikimedia so. DC. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Evie. Um, and Rosie Stevens and Goodnight, who a lot of you know from Wikimedia Women in Red, um, is partnering with us on this event. We'll be there, um, and we're really excited about this event. If you're in the D.C. area um, on October 8th, please come or live stream. There'll be a link later um, for you all to find out more information. Okay, this is something I'm really excited about, um, and I'm calling it Experts on Experts. Um, so this is Andrew Lee from Wikimedia DC, um, Peter Meyer from Wikimedia DC, I don't know if either of them are in the room, and Kathy Franz from the National Museum of American History. She's the curator of diverse work and history. Um, so we did an edit-a-thon in July around um, a new collection, a new exhibit um, at that museum called All Work and No Pay about Amer um, American women's invisible labor and unpaid labor. <clears throat> and so what we did at this event is we recorded Kathy Franz, the expert on this topic, um, and going through um, really important articles about housekeeping, invisible labor, emotional labor, labor, those articles on Wikipedia English, and seeing what she thinks about those articles in, re in real time. Not only what is sourced, but how it's written. Is it misleading? Could something be fleshed out more and why? Um, and so capturing that information, recording it, and being able to go back and edit those articles later in a more meaningful way outside of the edit-a-thon space. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> as you know, um, edit at that level, maybe in a three-hour period. But having that recorded um, allows us not only to document and collect that information from experts, but to do something with it. So I think this is a really exciting model as well for edit-a-thons. Okay, so some implementation. Um, one of the things that I'm focused on, you know, I'm more of and have been um, consistently a Wikipedia in residence who focuses a lot on community. So I'm not editing as much at, uh, as much myself. I'm focused on culture change, bringing in the community, bringing in internal uh, partners, things like that. Um, so thinking about how Wikipedia can continue to be introduced at all of our units. And like Effie said, Wikimedia DC has done a good job doing that in, with the Smithsonian historically, but thinking about how we can do more of that internally and growing our partnerships. Um, Effie mentioned the Transcription Center at the Smithsonian. So thinking through what existing Smithsonian volunteer networks exist, like transcription, like our volunteer docents, and are there micro tasks in the wiki world that we can give to them or ask them to participate in, or do surveys around asking them what they care about and why they do volunteer currently, and bring that into the Wikipedia space. And I think that's something that, again, could be documented <laughs> once this is complete um, for glance and other contexts. And I'm really, really excited about figuring out the, the participation options there. Um, and then our external partnerships, as I mentioned, Wikimedia DC, Women in Red, whose knowledge 
but growing external partnerships in the wiki space and outside of it around this initiative. And so I promised you links. So here's the shortcut and here's the QR code for the landing page for the American Women's History Initiative project. You can sign up. Um, if you're interested in any of the things I mentioned, partnerships, micro crowdsourcing, um, that Ada Lovelace Day, um, edit a thon, all the information will be on this page. Um, also, if you follow the hashtag because of her story, a lot of news and updates and event information is tweeted out from because of her story from Smithsonian accounts. So it's a great way to stay connected with what we're doing. And so really, we just want to end on this goal from absence, from the historical record, from the digital record, to presence, to having that stuff there and documented through all of our collective work. And so if you have any questions, we will take them. Thank you so much. Media in the back. I wanted to ask if the transcription website itself is open source this software. That is something I'm working on. <laughs> it is not right now. It is a Drupal site. Um, the Library of Congress has open sourced their uh, transcription experience, and, and we've just not been good at doing that yet. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Dave. Any others? Yeah. Uh, or do you know about any other projects uh, that are similar to this outside of the Smithsonian that you are working together with or so regarding uh, including more women or having more female representation or other uh, marginalized groups? Uh, yes. Um, so there's museums in every state that have content about women. So that, I mean, that's just something we're reconciling with as a sector is, is you know, we may not be expressly a museum about a certain culture or about a gender, but it's there. So that's, that's one part of it. But um, there's a women's center in New York that has uh, a whole educational curriculum because our K-12 curriculum lacks a lot of this women's history. So um, we're, we are wealthy in terms of digitization and, um, and being able to create lots of data. So we're going to be leveraging our collections in their curriculum. We have partnerships uh, with, you know, through our affiliates. So we're going to be working with them to do this. Um, there are women's museums in various areas of the country. So for every edit-a-thon, we're hoping to bring one in remotely, at least. And once we've established that way of working, we're going to put the call out to that network of about 250 organizations in the US. Yes. You um, mentioned in the beginning that you actually are, have the opportunity or the aim to open a new museum on women's history. And I wonder if that's actually like, a good thing to do to open a new museum just dedicated to women's history and not including it into every single museum to make visible women's history. So I'm, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the Smithsonian and okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I have to put that there. Um, I, I don't think uh, that's the place to start, like you're saying. I think, um, you know, first of all, a museum, it took it took 100 years to build the African American History and Culture Museum. We are in an interesting time. A women's museum is not li likely to pass through government bodies, so there's, there's lots of reasons to not even think about that at this point, but yes, uh, the stories that are below the surface that take resources to pull them out and dedicated staff time uh, needs to happen first. And that is, you know, we have a Latino American Center waiting for a museum. We have an Asian Pacific American Center waiting for a museum. We are all waiting for that recognition and that, um, you know, that representation. So that's the work that we need to do. And I think digital is a way I have less borders than the museum, so I can form 
more nimble partnerships than my colleagues who are doing exhibits and things like that. So it's it's a good area to to think bigger. I think we're out of time. So since I'm minding the glam space, I'm also gonna mind our time. Um, but I'm gonna put the slides up. So that link that I showed earlier, the QR code in the link, I'm gonna add our slides there, the link to our Google slide deck if you wanna view it. Um, we also have candy and stickers from our initiative, stickers of this. Um, please take some and thank you so much for your time.